Hi, my name is Paul Malhotra. I'm Senior Director for Connected Services at Audi of America. We're here in beautiful Oceanside showing you some future technology that's going to be coming in our cars and it's looking at improving safety on U.S. roads. 42,900 people lost their lives in 2021 because of collisions with motor vehicle accidents. This number is growing. In fact, this year the first quarter show, saw a 7% increase in that number. Vulnerable road users like bicyclists are some of the worst impacted. Almost a thousand bicyclists lose their lives every year because of crashes with motor vehicles. 130,000 are injured. This scourge needs to stop. It's a drain on our economy and we have technology that can stop it. One of the biggest reasons that we hear when we ask motor vehicle drivers why did that collision happen is that they just didn't see the cyclist. CV2X is a technology that can actually let you see that bicyclist. This stands for cellular vehicle to everything. It's a cellular communication technology that actually communicates directly. It bypasses the towers. It does not need this infrastructure that comes with 4G or 5G. That direct communication is so important because think about sending a text message and how long that takes to go through the network. Or even voice calls or data communication is just not fast enough when you're talking about a situation where you have an impending collision. CB2X communicates 10 times a second. And so the vehicle can be aware of something around it the bicyclist on the other side can be aware of something around it. CB2X is a standard that's been approved by the U.S. government for deployment in the U.S. as the only standard that can be used for intelligent transportation systems in the 5.9 gigahertz spectrum. It is going into deployment mode. We expect about 5 million devices outside of cars to be CB2X enabled by mid-decade. That's about the time that we expect to launch vehicles equipped with this technology. And by the end of the decade, about 60 million devices outside of cars that we would be able to communicate to. You'd be able to communicate to construction workers wearing vests that would have CB2X radios so that if they come too close to the edge of a construction zone, you can avoid hitting them. They'll be equipped in school buses so, which, uh, so that when they extend their stop arms, then an oncoming alert of a vehicle to a, can be sent to a vehicle. They'll be equipped in emergency vehicles so that they don't have collisions on the road. They'll be equipped in the future on pedestrian smartphones. And so with all of this happening, that separation that we've been seeing over the last few years where the number of bicyclist deaths actually increased 44% in the last decade, even though the total number of fatalities from traffic uh, incidents increased 16%, depth separation that we are seeing can finally turn around and we can start reducing the number of fatalities. CB2X is a start. We start with vulnerable road users. You then go to the next step, which is reducing collisions and fatalities down to zero. And this puts us on the path to an autonomous future where these vehicles can make decisions on their own and even act on behalf of the driver. In this parking lot, we have a setup that shows five different bicyclist use cases in action. These are the five reasons that 80% of bicyclist deaths happen. And what we are showing here is the ability for both the bicyclist and the driver in the vehicle to be alerted whenever an impending collision is, is happening. So we're very excited about this. We expect this technology to be in, our, in, in all our cars very soon, in our next generation architectures. All the partners we're working with are working on the same thing. We are here with Spoke Safety, which is the company that builds the technology that goes on the bicycles. And we're here with premium bicycle manufacturer BMC, who are planning on equipping all of their bikes in the future with this technology embedded right in. I'm Reed Sagetti, co-founder of Spoke. Today what you're going to see are five CVDX use cases. The first is parallel parking departure. The second is car behind or bike in front. The third is right turn assist. The fourth is intersection movement assist. And the fifth is left turn assist. Those are the top five killers of vulnerable road users today. So my name's Kamal Kapadia. I'm in the connected services group with Audi of America based in uh, Herndon, Virginia. So yeah, the technology here, I think they've already described to you guys right in the presentation that's using cv tech so it's a direct uh, communication. So it's not using cameras or LIDARs or radars, which of course would work in certain instances, but in places where uh, there's obstructions, those devices not, or those sensors won't work. But this type of communication will allow you to basically see around corners and stuff like that. So. Of course, all the action will be happening out on the road, but all the messaging to the driver will happen via the instrumentation clusters, um, and then there will also be audible beeps uh, when the alerts are there. So assuming our cyclist is paying attention, he's ready, because I can't see him, I will get into position for the first use case. So the first use case we're doing is parallel parking departure alert. Um, so I will first park in our parallel parking spot here. and. If I'm a safe driver, as I'm pulling out of the parking spot, 
I'll turn my left turn signal on to pull, indicate I'm pulling out of the spot, but he will be coming up the road and I'm already getting an early warning saying, okay. yeah, the cyclist. So as you see, I wanted to take, okay. I wanted to come out of spot, but he's coming up the road and I'm getting the warning. And there he goes. And now it's clear for me to go. The next use case we'll demonstrate is car approaching rear. And this is actually one of the uh, use, uh, one of the use cases that causes most of the collisions. Um, it's probably a lot of drivers are not paying attention. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm approaching him from the rear, coming up on him, I know it scares cyclists a lot. I will already get a proximity warning here saying there's a cyclist up ahead. And in this case, it could also be that there's a vehicle between the cyclist and me, but I can still see through the cycle, I mean through the through the car, sorry. So if let's say at the last second the guy in front of me slams his brake on, I at least don't have to be in that situation because I know there's something there already. The next one is cross traffic alert. So imagine um, I'm coming up to an intersection. Basically we've made a barrier of cars there, which would be like your visual obstruction. And so if I'm coming straight through the intersection, I can't see somebody coming across. I could easily broadside somebody, but in this case I'll get messages. So I can't see the cyclist coming across, but the car already sees it. And as you can see, I get the messages there. The next one we'll do here is right turn assist. So if I'm making a right turn out of the parking lot, say for instance, or a road, and there is a bike lane maybe, and the bicycle's coming up the road. So as I'm about to make this right turn, I'm getting a message, oh, there's a cyclist coming, so you better wait. And there he goes. This is where he could be on a sidewalk, he could be on the road, but of course I'll give him the right of way. The last use case we'll do is um, left turn assist. And in this one, imagine that I'm about to make a left turn at an intersection. There's an oncoming car who's also making a left turn, so I don't really have to wait to make my left turn. Um, and so I could, in theory, just go without stopping. However, there happens to be a bicycle that is behind that car that I completely cannot see, um, which I could easily broad, broadside. But I will get, again, notification here saying that there's a bicycle there, so wait. Right, so here I am. I, I would normally just go because he's making left, but now I'm getting the messages, of course, and welded in advance, so I know to stop and not just go. And that's the five use cases in a nutshell that we've uh, here to demonstrate. So the question is, what is the corollary human-machine interface that you're getting on the bike equivalent to the car? So in each of the use cases, there is a corresponding audio alert that comes first on the bike. The reason that the audio alert comes first is because our intention is for the rider to be able to keep their eyes on the road, scanning for threats, and riding their bike and enjoying that. So the audio alert comes first. Um, should the person not hear an audio alert, there's also a corresponding uh, visualization on the, uh, the vision display, which is a corollary alert in each of the use cases, meaning uh, intersection movement assist, or the car is behind, or right turn assist, or left turn assist. There's a corresponding alert for each one of the alerts that you're getting in the vehicle. Fundamentally, what Spoke is doing together with Audi is diffusing the anxiety that we typically have between a motorist and a cyclist. I don't think most motorists or most cyclists intend to cause a crash or get involved in something that is life-threatening. However, accidents do happen. Oftentimes, it's either the motorist or the cyclist who isn't obeying traffic laws or paying attention to rolling stops or not stopping at all. So we're not treating or discriminating uh, one group or the other. We're actually treating both groups equivalently, meaning we're expecting cyclists to obey traffic laws just as much as we're expecting motorists to do. Um, will the alerts stop someone from being nefarious and foolish? They won't. Um, in the case of the vehicle, the brakes can be applied in a level four, level five uh, autonomous uh, scenario. However, on the bicycle, you can't do that, right? So while there's differences, our intent is to treat both the motorist and the cyclist in the same way, diffusing the anxiety between motorists and cyclists. This is the Connect module, uh, which is the companion to the CME. CME is an on-bike application. The Connect was designed intentionally to be uh, a portable uh, seated X module, where this can find its way into the back of your backpack, as we were just doing a moment ago. 
right? Right here. Or deliberately in my jersey pocket. Or in the glove box of the car. So this is the portable kind. <laughs> Thank you.